Hey, so in today's video, I'd like to return to the Death series, for we got another round of insights on it. Sounds funny saying Death series makes it seem so epic, so solidified. It's three parts, how could it be so epic? But anyway, I'd like to return to this series, for we've just had another death in the family, and with that comes some insights. The one we lost was my grandparents' dog, which, you know, it sounds a little funny at first, because... How could I be so close to my grandparents' dog? Most people don't live with their grandparents. Uh, <clears throat> with their grandparents, but I lived with my grandparents till I was fourteen, and this dog was around since I was about eight. So he was a big part of my childhood, and he was technically my dog too. I say my grandparents because they owned him, but he was he was still my dog too. He was still part of the family, my family. He was still in that circle. So for that. It was, I, I was closer to him than, than, than you'd expect, than anyone's just grandparents' dog, you know, because we usually think, you don't live with your grandparents, so how could, how could you be so close? But I had 14 years on my belt, so give or take. Anyway, this death was definitely the most painful one so far, because everyone else that I've lost has either been distant or I just haven't really known them enough. I, I still was sad. That doesn't mean I had disregard, of course, but but I've known this puppy since I was about eight, right? So so he's definitely been a big part. As far back as I can remember, technically speaking. So so for that, he was definitely more close. He was closer than all the all the others. And it's provided me with a great deal of insights, actually, specifically into death. Because these are just, uh, like, it was a situation that really taught me how to resonate death. Because the other ones, they tell you, or the other death experiences that I've had, they really told me how to enjoy life. Still how to resonate death, but more about how to enjoy the life you have while you have it. But this one's more about resonating death. An equally valuable um, topic, I'd say. But without further ado... Gotta quit my rambling here. Let's get right into it. So as I said, he was a big part of my life. Specifically my childhood. Because you know, he was he was there since I was about eight. Spent many, many years grow, uh, having or sharing many memories with this dog. Growing and experiencing many different things with this dog at my side. And it's funny because you don't really remember too, too much when you're a child until you're about... 8 to 10-ish, right? So, that's technically, when, I, when, when we got him, that was technically when I started to remember things the most. Make those good memories, make the most memories. Not to say you don't remember anything beyond that or, or before that. But to say that you, you mostly can remember things around 8. You don't really remember 5. You, you don't really remember that stuff. So, he was definitely a part of my of my general childhood memories he was definitely a good chunk of it just as any other member of the family at that time yeah there there's i've shared memories with all of them but the dogs included he was there he was included so he was a big part of my life and it was hard to kind of it, it was hard to see him degrade because in the weeks fall coming up to his death it was it, it was like he changed in a snap just like that. Because he, um, he got razor thin. And you could feel his bones. You could feel the bones and everything. He, he just started puking. And, and he, he'd drink water. He'd eat some food. But he couldn't hold it down. He'd just be puking and puking. And eventually he started going blind. He'd just start with barking at random things. And then he, and then he got so blind that he couldn't see at all. Like I, I, was, I remember... In, uh, it was a few days before his appointment. I was trying to give him a treat. And I was like this far apart from him. And he was looking over here. I'm over here. But he's just gone. He's spacing. I had to hit. I had to kind of slap his nose a little bit with this pepperoni. This little piece of pepperoni. Just so he could sniff it. No. Oh, this is a pepperoni. This is for me. And that was a little. Uh, yeah, that's difficult to see in a way. And it all happened before his appointment. 
and there was nothing we could really do. This isn't a matter of getting him into the vet on time. The vet told us that like there there's nothing you can really do. So coming up to his appointment, we couldn't prevent it. And when the appointment came around, she told us he's got a list of problems. But the main one was diabetes, and we couldn't really prevent any of this. We couldn't do anything. So she advised us to put him down. Best way, the best course of action. Because the alternative, actually, was a bunch of experimental, or not, not experimental, but risky surgery that might improve some aspects of his failing body. Like, you might get some of, uh, of his eyesight back. Uh, and on the other, on the flip side, it could do nothing. Or it could kill him. Some of the surgeries um, actually could have killed him. Uh, not, it's not like it was likely, but it was to say, you know, 60-40. <laughs> that kind of thing. Because he's just a chihuahua, right? So he's, he's little and he's old. He, he was like 12. And chihuahuas don't live that long, I don't think. Or, or they do, but in rare cases. So he was a champion of, of, of just living. So, so for him... It was a little bit risky to do any surgery, but we were offered uh, a multitude of surgeries that would cost a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money that we don't have for that kind of deal, and two shots of insulin a day until he's dead. And that was not going to work, because right off the bat, you know, we don't have the money, he could die, we don't have the time, or well, we, we, we would be able to make the time, but... It's not going to be easy to go back to back to back with surgeries and treatments all the time. We'd make it work if it was the if it was the reason or if it was the only way. But you know, it, it was it's hard to fit that into a schedule with that many treatments and that many surgeries every day. And then, so so no money, no time. And then, furthermore, this dog was a devil. I swear to God. When you try to get in this dog's space beyond petting him, because he loved a good belly rub, just like any dog, any other dog, but when you tried to pick him up, when you tried to groom him, clip his nails, he would lose his mind. Lose his mind. And and when you try, when we get him in a cage for, because uh, we had to put him in a cage, he couldn't, he would be choked if he was in the car. You could not put this dog in the car. So if you tried to put him in a cage to put him in the car, he would lose his mind. This dog was a devil. So much so that he got the nickname of Lucifer. Which is which was close to his name. His name was Louie. So he got Lucifer as a nickname from some of the family and friends. Just because that dog is such a devil. Was such a devil. So my, you know there was even a point where my grandfather tried to. I, th I think he just tried to pick him up. The dog, you know how chihuahuas bite a thousand times because they're, they're tiny but fast, so they chomp down like a thousand times? He chomped down on my grandfather's finger like a thousand times and broke broke the nail. And it was it, like, it, it, like he didn't lose his finger. Nothing really bad happened. But just he just wanted to pick him up. The dog just ravaged his finger. So a little funny story, but he, he was a devil dog. He was not one... That you could pick up and do things with. Except for pet him. So imagine this. He's blind. And we're poking him twice a day with insulin needles. How is he going to take it? The chihuahuas have brains that are so. That like like this big. Like this little chunk on my finger. They're like that big. They're like little peas. How are they, how are they going to compute anything? Chihuahuas are stupid. We got to recognize that. They're cute but they are stupid. They are not golden retrievers. They're not any of that. They're pretty stupid. But they're still cute. Point is, he's blind. He's stupid. How's he going to resonate it? And he's a devil dog. So how, how's he going to react? He'd be pissed. He'd be sad. And he'd, be, he'd probably live in fear. Keep in mind that these, these um, insulin shots would only extend his life by so much, right? So... He wouldn't even really be living for too much longer. But he would be pissed. He would live his final days pissed and in fear. Because he'd think that we're just hurting him. 
And even if he could have seen what we were doing, he'd probably still think that we were just hurting him. Because once again, chihuahuas are pretty stupid. So, what's he gonna do? He's gonna die thinking that we hate him. Thinking that we were just torturing him in his last days. How's that, how's that supposed to be any better? So the options were put him down peacefully or extend his life by a little bit, but make him hate us. So the, 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 the choice became clear. We were going to put him down next week, a few days. And I agree with it. I, I think that that was the best choice. But it was in seeing that and it was in... It was in experiencing this because this is once again my first, t um, technically my first go with it. Because I, I, we put a dog down when I was younger, when I was about, mm, I want to say seven, maybe even nine. But once again, I was too young to know what was going on, and I can only remember it so much. So, so this is technically technically my first go with it, and in in seeing this process in thinking about it, putting a dog down, it, it really taught me a lot. A lot about death and a lot about just, well, yeah, yeah, just a lot about death. Because I was able to accept it, but I also wasn't, in a way. It, it, it was weird. Because the way that I look at it is that even with these choices presented, I still am looking at my dog here, looking at how they suffer. I'm looking at how this all happens and I don't want them to die, but I don't want them to live in in such suffering. And both both ends of things are bad. Because we don't want them to die, but we don't want them to suffer. So I was there and I I, I could accept that he was going to die, but I also couldn't accept it. I thought about that for a little while, but why I'm so like that? And honestly, the the only thing, the, the thing that came up, the only thing I could really get out of this is that we can't predict death. It's once again that we can't predict death. We cannot anticipate it. We cannot prepare for it. We cannot do anything. And I know you've heard that before. We've even talked about it before, I'm pretty sure, on the on the last two. But you just can't predict it. You just can't anticipate it. And you just can't prepare for it. That's That's why. That's why it was such a weird feeling. And furthermore, even at that, not being able to predict it, not being able to prepare for it, this is a situation that is very similar to the lesser and greater evils. And the concept of the lesser greater evils is that both outcomes are bad, but one is slightly better, at the least. At, at least, slightly better. There's the greater evil, which is just bad, and then there's the lesser evil, which is bad, but not as bad. So, the way I view it is that this was a lesser greater evil situation. The reason I couldn't accept it, but I could at the same time, is because I knew that we were doing the lesser evil, but it was still evil. Not, well, not, not to say that this is evil, but to say that in metaphorical sense, it's not preferred, it's not good, it's not what we want. There was nothing evil about it what we did. I think we did the right thing. I'm fine with it. I'm glad we did it. But death is not something that is just good. It's not something that you can that you can 100% say I'm just going to be fine with this. You 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 just can't. You can't. Maybe in some instances, but you can't always. There is still a positive side though. This isn't a 100% bad. I'm going to get into that later. But my point is when it comes to death, there is no easy way to put it. There is no good, 100% good way to put it. It's going to be bad, but there will be a slightly better way. There will be a slightly better option. In some cases, you know, some sometimes people will just die one way. There was no second option. Animals might die one way. There was no second option. But when it comes to situations like this, either he could have suffered or he could have died peacefully. We had a greater and lesser evil. So in this case, the lesser evil was our, was our preferred death. It's still bad, but it was preferred. And that's ultimately where I went with it. 
we can't accept it because we can't predict it and it's lesser greater evil and we need to accept that we need to be able to make the sacrifices necessary to achieve that lesser evil because in in this scenario if we let him live any longer if we did that alternative route would we have felt any better i asked myself that would i feel any better trying to make him live longer would i rather he lives for me or lives for himself because the way that it goes is if he lives for me then i'm the one who's get, uh, then he's going to suffer but he's going to get insulin shots and i'm going to see him and he's going to live a little longer but if he lives for himself he'll die peacefully and he won't suffer he won't need the insulin he'll die happy so do i want him to die happy or do i want him to suffer just so i could see him that's the true question that's what i that's what i asked and it it was instantly clear i did not want that i wanted him to die peacefully i did not want him to suffer so just like that cut it down and it made it so so much easier to resonate so so much easier and it made it easier to be positive too because like i said like or like i mentioned we're going to get into death is not a hundred percent bad there is a good part because the way i view it is that in those moments if you can't resonate this death if you cannot view it in some positive way it'll just be bad and negative to you but to me i was able to say he died peacefully, we did the right thing, and I enjoyed my time with him. Because I can accept that he's about to die. And I can accept that he's going to have to die this way. That he should die that He should die this way. Because if he doesn't, he'll suffer. So the way I view it is that, yes, death is bad. It is still one of the evils. But I chose the lesser evil. I accepted the lesser evil. And I'm happy with that. And then I can move on. And I, can, and I can go think about all the happy times I had with him. Of course, that doesn't mean you can't mourn, you can't cry and all that. That's normal. But after a little bit, after a couple days, it took me a couple days, all I can think about now is just the happy times I had with him. And it helps a lot once they're dead, I'll tell you that. It's it, That sounds so funny to say out loud, I didn't think about that in my head. <laughs> but <laughs> my point is, once they're dead... It's easier to, to resonate because it's done. You don't have to wait for the build-up. You don't have to wait for that. Because in those days where I was just waiting for, the, waiting for the moments to pass and it was all building up to that moment, I spent a lot of time with him. And it was sad. It was, it was just, like, it was happy, but it was sad in a way. Because death is constantly hovering over you. And that, and that really clouds your memories and, and your experiences. But once it's once it's over, there's no more there's no more death. Now you can just mourn. And once that's done, you can think about all the good times. All of it. And that and that's truly the positive end of it. You just need to know that in cases like this, choose the lesser evil. If you choose the lesser evil, you did the right thing. And you should be happy for that. That's the way I'd view it. This is generally, like I said, a lesson on how to how to resonate and accept death. But it's such a valuable one nevertheless. Because there will probably come a time where you would have to put someone down. Maybe a pet. Maybe a, maybe a person. Because they, they do do that in uh, some instances. But there will be a time... Where you, you might have to choose between greater lesser evil. And you should be able to accept and resonate and sacrifice so that you can achieve and, and accept the lesser evil. And you can know that you did the right thing. That is truly the lesson here. That is truly what this has taught me. What this has done for me. It's a... It's still normal to mourn and all that, but... But just try to be positive in those moments. Just try to know that you did the right thing. That's that's the idea. That's the idea. That's how it went for me. It's much easier after time passes, and it's much easier once you understand this. There is, there is a positive aspect. Death is bad all around, but when you do the right thing, you did the right thing, and you should be happy for that. And you should be happy for the time that you 
have with them. That truly is how you can enjoy each and every last moment, especially in the days coming up to death. That's how I did it. That's how I enjoyed each and every moment with him, even in the face of death. Either way, that's about everything. That's the, the insights. That's the lesson here. This is one of the, or this series, it's just one of the more difficult bunch bunches to learn and share, but they're valuable nevertheless. It's hard to kind of always put into words because it's, um, it's very much about the thoughts as you're going in and experiencing it. But this is generally what my thoughts were. This is generally where I went with it. And I'm sure that this will help you a ton. Just remember, there are, yeah, just remember to be positive. That's my challenge, technically, is just to stay positive. There isn't really a challenge for you on death today. I just want you to go be positive and spend some time with your family. There's no death related challenge. I just want you to go spend some time with your family because they will die one day. If not, you might die first. Accept it. That's the way it's going to be. I know it's bleak, but you got to accept it. So go spend some time with your family. Enjoy those moments. Don't even think about death. Just go enjoy some, just go enjoy some time. Just go do it. And remember to stay positive, even in the face of death. Enjoy each and every moment. That's about everything, though. I hope this helps you a ton. Take care, my friend.